quartiles. Quartiles are also measures of variation because they also tell us how spread your data is and where it's located as well. So with quartiles, it splits your data into four quarters, four groups of data or four segments of 25% each. Different books use different methods of finding the quartiles as well. Um, so you need to, to be very careful when you use the books because then also when I, I explain the quartiles here, because I'm assuming the method that I'm sharing with you might be simple for me, but you might prefer to use the percentile. You can also use the percentile method to calculate the quartiles. As long as you know that for the first quartal, it is 25%. For the third quartal, it's 75%. And the median is 50%. Oh, it's 50%. So you just need to know those things. So you know that we divide the data into the uh, four segments. So with quartal one, quartal two, quartal three, where first quartal accounts for 25% of the the data with more than 75 are larger than that value. And the quart, uh, quartile two, which is the same as your median, accounts for 50% are below, 50% are up. The third, quart, you know, the third quartile accounts for 25% are, are larger values and 75% of the values are smaller than that quartile. How we find the quartiles, we use the position like we did with the median. We use the position, but it's different. With the quartiles, to find the first quartile, or to find the quartile, we need to define or find the position. Then use the position to go find the value. So quartile one, we use N plus one divided by four because there are four quarters. So N plus one divided by four to find the position of quartile one. And remember also with the quartiles, you need to order your data or sort your data from lowest to highest. Where your N is your sample size, how many they are. So you sort your data, you calculate your first quartile, which you find the position of the first quartile. The value on that position, it is your quartile, it is your quartile value. Your Quartile value. Don't get confused with the position and the value. If they ask you to find the position, you use n plus one divided by four. If they ask you to find the quartile value, you use the position to go find the value. Okay. To find the second quartile is the same as the median. I'm not going to repeat that because we did the median. You know how to find the position of the median and then finding the median. Finding the third quartile, we use three times n plus one divided by four because we're looking at the third quarter. When you calculate or when you find the position, there are rules because when you we divide them by four, therefore it means we're not going to get a whole number. Um, or oh, we might get a whole number or we might not get a whole number. We might get a quarter or a, uh, a fraction. So there are rules that you need to take into consideration when you when you calculate in the position. The first one is when you calculate the position and the result is a whole number, then it's easy. The value at that position, it is your quarter. So if I had one, two, three, four, five, and I was calculating quartal one and the position was two, after I did quartal one is equals to n plus one divided by two, oh, divide by four. So there are five plus one divided by four, which is six divided by four, and it will, it's not gonna give me a whole number. I used the wrong, okay. Let's not use the calculation because then it's not going to give me the whole the whole number. So let's assume that we calculated the quartile one position by using n plus one divided by four, and we find that the position is on second is the second position. Then that 
I just say one, two, this is my quartile one value. And that is the whole number. <clears throat> when the answer is a fractional value, so like I calculated quartile one, and I use n plus one divided by four, and I find the answer to be 2.5. So like we did it with the other one, three, four, five. So if it's 2.5, it's located between the two values. So I must take the average of the two values. So it means it's two plus three divided by two, which will give me uh, 2.5 as my uh, quartile value. Um, so if I change this to three, so it would have been different because you, you're going to get confused and say, but it is 2.5. Why did we have to calculate 2.5? Remember, if my values are not that one. So if these are my values and it's 2.5, so I must just say where is then I must say three plus three divided by two, which also still another example that does not make any difference. So you're still going to get the answer as three. But if this value here, it is not three, let's say it's four. I'm just gonna increase my value so that it makes it doesn't end up being so let's say this is five and this is eight and this is seven let's say it's like that then we say it falls our position is on the it's 2.5 so one 2.5 is located between those two values then we say three plus five divided by two which gives me eight divided by two which means my position my middle position is four and that's how you will use the fractional half. <clears throat> Sometimes you're not going to get a whole number or a fractional half, but you will get a non-fractional value. What I mean, if it says quartile one, it's you calculated it, and you find the answer as 2.25. So I have one, three, five, seven, and nine. The answer here it says my position is at 2.25. So since my position is at 2.25, so I can go 1, 2.25 can be somewhere closer to there. So since my position is closer to 2, then I can just estimate this to be 2. Then my quartile value will be 3. We just round down. If the answer was 2.75, if it was 2.75, then 2.75 would have been one, 2.75 would have been somewhere here, which then tells me it is closer to three. Therefore, we can just round up and estimate that our position is at position three. Then we count one, two, Three, then our quartile one value is five. The position is still 2.75, it's not three, it's 2.75. But we estimate that our quartile value, we will find it at position three. So we just go to position three and find the value. That's how you calculate the quartiles. In the next 15 minutes, Let's calculate the quartiles. Quartiles from the data set that we have, we have 20, 11, 12, 13 up until 22. There are nine observations. We can first find the quartile one position by calculating the quartile one position. N is nine plus one divided by four. The quartile one position is at 2.5 and then we go count. 1, 2.5 is located between 12 and 13. And then since it's located between the two values, we 
we take an average of the two values. Okay. Finding. We already did quarter one, so let's look at quarter two. Finding quartal two position, remember the quartal two position, we use N plus one divided by two because it's the same as the median. So our N is nine plus one divided by two, it's on position five. One, two, three, four, five, it's our value is 16. So our quartal two, which is the same as our median, is 16. Finding quartal three, Finding quartal three, we use the formula three times n plus one divided by four. Three times n, our n is nine plus one divided by four. Nine plus one is 10, 10 times three is 30, 30 divided by four, we get 7.5. One, two, three, four, five, six, 7.5. It's between 18 and 21. Therefore, we take the average, which is 18 plus 21 divided by 2, which gives us the value of quartile 3 as 19.5. Quartile 1 and quartile 3 are not measures of central location, as we, we don't discuss them in, in measures of central location, and quartile 2 it's part of the measures of central location because it is the same as your median. When we have the quartile, we can calculate the interquartile range. When we calculate the interquartile range, we do not use the, the position, but we use the values. So interquartile range, we use the value of quartile three minus the value of quartile one. Remember, we take the smallest quartile and the highest quartile. The quartile three is the highest one and quartile one is the smallest one. So it will be high minus low. So quartile three minus quartile one value, and it will tell us the spread of your data. <clears throat> Same as with the range, it's a measure of variability because also with the quartile or interquartile is not affected by outliers or extreme um, values. And also it includes also not only the interquartal, but also quartal one and quartal three, and we call those resistant measures because they don't get affected by the outliers. So how do we calculate the quartals or interquartile? Remember we did calculate quartal one and quartal two values. We found that quartal one value was 12.5 and quartal three value was 19.5. Five. The quartile range, 19.5 minus 12.5 gives us 7, and that is our quartiles. I'm not going to ask you to do this exercise. We can do it on Saturday. I want to wrap up the section. You can come back and watch the video before Saturday so that then you are aware. So this question will be in on Saturday. So when we have the interquartile range, remember we can create what we call the five number summary. And our five number summary describe the center, the spread, and the shape of your data. And we will use a box plot after because with our five number summary, we have the smallest value. We have quartile one value. 
we have quartile two value and we have quartile three value and also we have the highest value and all of them they create a five number summary and when we plot the box plot all these values are clearly identified on the box plot and they will show you the spread of the data so let's look at this example that we have here <clears throat> if we have this data set we are able to create the minimum value which is our smallest value and we have our maximum value where we have our whiskers. So the whiskers of a box plot gives us the minimum value and the maximum value. Sometimes box plot don't have the whisker, uh, but generally we do create the whiskers on the box, box plot. The box plot has a box. That's where the name comes from. This box is defined by the quartiles. The start of the quartile, which is quartile one, starts the box from the lowest of, from medium, minimum, to the start of the box. The middle of the box gives us the quartile two value, and the end of the box gives us the quartile three, which also um, includes the 25% of the data from maximum. To calculate interquartile range, we take your quartile three value and your quartile one value. Sorry, my data also on this one is stretched out. So it's 70 corresponds with this. So I didn't check when I, I did this. So this is 45 and this is 30 and that is 12. So quartile three is 57, quartile one is 30. 57 minus 30 gives us the interquartile range. 45 is our median, which is our quartile two, and 12 is our minimum, 30 is our quartile one, and 57 is our quartile three, and 70 is our maximum. And this is what we call a box plot, uh, or box, box whisker plot, and it also gives us the five number summaries. We can use these measures to describe the shape of your data. So if we look at the quartiles, the median and the maximum values and the minimum values, we can also tell how the data is spread. Shape of the data, left skewed, the mean minus the, mean, the, the smallest value. So if we take the mean, so if I draw the box, I'm just going to draw it here. I'm just going to draw there. So remember, this is the smallest value. This is quartile one. This is quartile two. This is quartile three. And this is the maximum, the highest. So left skew says, the median minus the smallest value. So you take the median value and minus the smallest value. If it is more than, if it's bigger than your largest value, which will be the highest value minus the, quarter, uh, the median. So you take the highest value minus the median. If it's uh, the median of the, um, the difference between the median and the smallest value, if it's bigger than the largest value or the difference of the largest value and the median, the data is skewed. The same, quartile one, the difference between quartile one and the smallest value, if it's bigger than the difference between quartile three and the highest value, it is left skewed. You can just go and understand the whole graph, no, the whole table. For symmetric, the median, which is quartile, remember quartile two is the median. So the median, which is quartile two, minus the smallest value, if it's the same as your largest value minus the median, then your data is symmetric. Quartile one, 
minus the smallest value if it's the same as quartile or largest value minus quartile three then your data is symmetric same will apply to the right the your data being right skewed by looking at the difference between the median and the smallest value if it's less than then your data is left skewed and with that i'm not going to ask you to do any calculations i'm going to wrap up you have learned how to describe the properties of central tendency which are the mean the median the mode and how to do the calculation of finding them You've learned how to describe the properties of the variation, which is the range, the highest minus the smallest. The variance, which is the sum of your values minus your mean squared divided by n minus 1 for the sample variance and divide by n for the population variance. You also learned the standard deviation and we did some examples of how to calculate the standard deviation which is the square root of your your standard deviation is the square root of your variance and it tells you how far apart your data is from the mean or how variable are your data from the mean we also looked at the coefficient of variation which gives you the relative variation which is your standard deviation divided by the sample mean multiply by 100 and we always represent it as a percentage and we did an example and an exercise on that we also looked at the quartiles which gives you the distribution of the data in terms of the number summary and remember to find in the quartile we first need to find the position and remember the rules if it is a whole number at that position that's where you find the quartile at a fractional half, you take the average of the two values that the position is located. A non-fractional half, which is 0.25, you round down your value to the nearest value. If it's 70, 0.75, you round up to the closest upper value of that position. We also looked at the five number summary, which are made up of quartile, uh, smallest value, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, and highest value. And we know that quartile two is the same as the median. We also learned how to calculate the interquartile range, which is the highest quartile minus the smallest quartile, which is quartile three value, not the position, quartile three value minus quartile one value. And I also highlighted that some books, prescribed books, they do not use the quartiles, but they use the percentage, which is the same because one divided by, one divided by four gives you 25 percentile. So your 25 percentile will give you the position of uh, your first quartile. And if you want to find the 75 percentile, you, you, you will get quartile number three. If you want 50 percentile, you will get the value of quartile three or the median. So depending on which prescribed book you use, you need to understand how to get the positions and the values of the quartiles. And we created the, we constructed a box plot and we learned the distribution of the measures of variation or the measures using the quartiles. With that, it concludes today's session. Any question? Any question? Uh, Ma'am, I think I'll have to ask on WhatsApp when I, after catching up. It seems like the visuals were delayed. 
um, my network was acting up as well. Okay, you can also rewatch the video um, and then ask any question you have. Um, the video should be up today or to tonight. Uh, or early in the morning. Let me just not promise. Um, but tomorrow the the video should be up on my UNISA and also on Teams for those who have data. You can watch them on Teams or you can watch them on my UNISA. Um, will you also have time? Maybe uh, I'm I'm not sure exactly when I'll be able to post uh, the answers for those questions from Saturday. Will you at least have time to check, maybe? I'm always on WhatsApp. My WhatsApp is 24-7. OK. Yes. Thank okay, you. So if there is no content related questions, I'm going to stop the recording and then we can I, I will hang around for any question you have. So for now, let me stop the recording.